I think this might actually work. Uh oh, my wife's standing by the door. She may get at me. Or maybe she won't. I don't know. Um, you're not going to be able to see this very well. But this pipe, man, I've been wanting to make this video for a year. Who are you talking to? Who am I talking to? I was talking to YouTube. Oh, you're doing videos. I was going to. Dang. You look good. Did you just get out of the shower and feel better? Yeah, I feel better. Is that water? Uh, with a little tea in it. Oh, can I have a drink? Yeah, go ahead. What's going on above us? I don't know. His dog keeps barking, and so our dogs keep barking. Talk. talk to who? YouTube. Oh, should I start? Oh, I thought you already started. <laughs> I have. I was just joking. I was just joking. I just thought it was weird. We walked in the house and heard a deep voice, and I was like, who is he talking to? Dang, been it's been that long. I, I thought you might have been talking to you. Yeah, I can't. I called in answering the phone. All right. What was I saying? I was going to talk about my pipe that I found in St. Thomas. Did yeah. you pay $10? I know. Was it $10? Yeah. Really? I thought it was a little more than that. It was $10. He wanted 15 and we talked to another 10 He wanted 15 Okay. I'm glad you corrected me because I was going to say I paid more than that. I thought I paid around 20 I thought he wanted 40 and I paid 20 okay. It was a lady. It was a lady. You're right. But I don't, All right. I well, don't anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll say he wanted 20 and you paid 15 How about that? Maybe I did. I don't, I don't remember. remember. Anyway, so we were in St. Thomas last year, last summer, and they had this little street market. And it, they were just, it, it was set up like a outside flea market, if you've ever been to one of those. It was just like that. People had their little booths set up, uh, very informal, just... Uh, like makeshift tents, really. They weren't event tents. They're Some, very popular in places like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't spend a whole lot of time in the tropics. But anyway, so we're just uh, we're just digging through all the stuff, you know, and people are trying to sell you a T-shirt for $15, and then they'll sell it to you for $10, and they'll sell it to you for $5, and they'll sell it to you for $2 <laughs> as you're walking by. But we went by this booth, and this lady had two pipes in a basket. And the two pipes... Did not look bad, okay? And I've shot a lot of footage of this, and I've shot several videos. I'm going to splice them all together to make this video. But, um, so you'll get to see this thing in a much in much better light. But it had uh, some oxidation on it, on the stem. So it was a vulcanite stem, and I was like, man, that's a basket pipe with a vulcanite stem. That's probably got some age on it. And then when I picked it up, it had a stamp on it. It said pipe lawn l-o-n so there were two pipes one of them looked this one surprised me at the quality of it there's no there's no light gaps where the stem uh screws into the pipe or fits into the pipe and then there's uh it's sandblasted and so i thought man that's you know, whatever she was asking for it, 20, 40, I don't know. She wasn't asking a whole lot. Um, but anyway, I was going to try to bargain or barter with her anyway. So I um, uh, asked her if she'd take, you know, less. But the other pipe was more ornate than this one was. But it just gave me the feeling it's like it can't be that cheap and be good. It's got to be some sort of Mario Grandi type thing or something where they got these finishes on it. And, and so it was a, it had like a, uh, flame grain, but it was finished, uh, where this one was, you know, blacked and, um, sandblasted, but it's a straight sandblast, man. So, and a vulcanite stem. So I, uh, I talked the lady down to whatever, where maybe $10, I don't know, maybe $20, a cheap amount. And then, um, I, I took it back with me. And then later after we had left St. Thomas, I dug it out of a bag, and I re-looked at the stamp, and then I looked the stamp up. And it took some time to dig that stamp up. There, But there is a... I'm not going to tell you the whole story, because the story is on Pipedia, and it is a long story. But that story is short. A guy named Lon Swartz started a pipe shop in St. Thomas. 
And he had some pretty outlandish claims about it. Like he had three football fields of pipes on display. And I don't know, man, like some crazy things. But Pipepedia draws out this long story with him and this young carver uh, named Holm. Prebon Holm, I think was his name. Something like that. Preben Holm? Anyway, the kids started carving freehands. And and Lon Swartz was in love with them. This was back in like the 60s and 70s. So, because at the time, it wasn't very typical for a Danish pipe maker to make freehands. And so, this was kind of cutting edge deal. And, and Lon Swartz was big into it. And so, he started buying a bunch of them up and selling them in his shop in St. Thomas. Well, these these two pipes that I found, they obviously were shop pipes, but they, that shop hasn't been open since like the early eighties. So this is the grail, man. This is seventies briar, you know, just sitting in a basket. Now I'm, I feel so mad, not mad, but I feel bad that I didn't buy the other pipe, you know, at the same time. Because it was just sitting there and uh, maybe probably still there. If they if these sit here for that long, but it was in fantastic shape. The bowl's in fantastic shape. It hasn't been used, but I went ahead and sanitized it anyway. You know, it's been sitting in a in a flea market basket for who knows how long and where who knows where it was before that. But it had circulated on that island and it ended up there and now it's here. <laughs> now it's in the States, but well, in, in the mainland. So, um, that's the story of it, man. And uh, I uh, I buffed out the vulcanite and I um, just kind of cleaned it up and then I gave it a salt treatment with uh, Everclear and and there you go. So I've I've got it packed with some GLP's Black Point and I'm gonna use this Zippo pipe lighter. I found it somewhere. I don't know for just a few bucks, like maybe three or four bucks in the packaging. Um, I can't remember where I got it. Maybe it was at a flea market or something. I don't know, man. Some some major finds. But I thought this was fitting. Use this with this. And it's just filled with Ronson because that's all I had here at the house. Um, I typically use butane, but um, I wanted to try this lighter out anyway. So um, I had that Ronson for some project. We were cleaning something off something. I can't remember. So eh, it'll work. I know it's kind of fumey and smells bad, but, you know, look at that. <laughs> I just filled it. But we'll see what happens. And then we'll use <laughs> a little too much fuel in there. Classic nail. Just kind of going simple. Yes, really too much fuel. Don't do that. Very nice. It's funny. Um, the draw seems a little bit tight. I certainly didn't pack it tight, but I've had that experience before with older pipes. Perfecting the draft hole, whereas like nowadays, you know, things are bored out, you know. I think that was actually introduced to me when the when YouTube went crazy over Jake Hackard, you know? Jake Hackard, that's a interesting side story, but he's got several pipes on eBay now that are available. You know, 10 years ago when that got popular on YouTube, you couldn't you couldn't get them. I had bought a few for I don't even remember what the grow, going rate was. Maybe like $80, $80-90. And then they blew up on YouTube and you couldn't get them anymore. And now he has three or four out there just like old times. But they're, they, they after the YouTube craze, now they're... Or maybe inflation, I don't know. But I think, I think they're about 135 bucks a piece. Which I still think are worth it. They're not like a world-changing pipes. But they're American-made, American classic style, stubby, 
craggy pipes, like your BP jumps, that sort of thing. But made this year, you know. My draft's not too bad. Man, I haven't smoked Black Point in ye years and years, but it's fantastic. Well, I'm happy. Another interesting thing about this pipe is it's a sitter. I discovered that when I was uh, cleaning it. All right, so here's kind of a closer look at the pipe. Um, I had kind of taken off most of the symbol there when I buffed out the stem. It was real bad oxidized. Uh, but you can see it's sandblasted. And, I mean, it's, uh, let me see if I can get a light down in there. You can kind of see. I mean, it's in pretty good condition. It's, here's the best part. Look at this. This bowl is not cut center. It's got kind of an incline <laughs> across the top. It's not uniform, but I guess that's kind of, you know, some of the freehand part of it. But it had to work pretty hard. There's the stamp on the bottom of it there. You can pipe lawn. And you can see there's no, I mean, it's pretty well put together. But real well put together. Fits good, snug. Got that tapered insert there. I mean, this thing is still got some debris on my, <laughs> got some dust on my knuckles from just a second ago on the buffer. But um, all in all, man, pretty pleased with this thing. Is ten dollar fines a ten dollar fine? You know. So anyway, man, I just thought that was super interesting. And um, so I just wanted to share it with you guys and um, show you kind of that, that interesting find, man. And it turns out that the pipe smokes pretty well on first smoke, but really it'll be, you know, end of summer before I truly know how good of a smoker it is really kind of let it open up. That's all I got. God bless you and I hope you have a wonderful day.